Hey everybody, this is day five, evaluating expressions, unit one, formative one. All right, you're going to notice that this is very similar to the last video. Um, we're going to basically just do one step more, but we're going to still use our order of operations. All right, so basically the gist of it is we're going to plug in numbers and then we're going to use our PEMDAS again. Okay, so if we look at our first problem here, we have 4t plus 2u squared, right? And we have t is equal to 2 and u is equal to 3. Those are the two values that I'm giving you here. So what we want to do is actually plug in those two values of t equals 2 and u equals 3 and then evaluate our expression. So 4t means we're going to take 4 times t. Remember that from the very first section we did. So 4 times 2. I like to write that in parentheses a lot, so 4 parentheses 2. Either one would be correct, 4 dot 2 or 4 parentheses 2. Plus 2 times, all right, u squared, so 3 squared. Now notice how the u is squared is not in parentheses, okay? So that means that we only want to square the u, not the 2. Okay, so first thing we want to look here, we're going to look back at our PEMDAS, so we want to look for parentheses first. Well, remember what I said yesterday, the only parentheses that we care about is stuff that has an operation inside of it. This right here, parentheses, does not have an operation inside of it. It's simply just 4 times 2, so we're not going to do that first. We want to look for our exponents next, which would be the 3 squared. So now I have 2 times 9. Okay, notice how I could have written this in parentheses here as well and this one in parentheses. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, it's the same thing. So now I have multiplication and division to worry about. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 times 9 is 18. 8 plus 18 gives me 26. And there's your final answer. So you evaluated this expression with t equals 2 and u equals 3. You could be given any numbers here. These just come from something that's made up. They're from nowhere. Okay? All right, our next one, 3h squared minus t minus the quantity of t plus h, where h equals 1 and t equals 8. So we have h equals... h equals negative 1, so we're going to take 3 times negative 1. Remember when we have a number next to a letter, it means multiplication. Okay, so then we're going to take minus 8 plus negative 1. Okay, so all I did was plug these two numbers in for the letters that they represent. All right, so now I want to look for parentheses. Okay, now is when I have two different things that are in parentheses where there's operations. So inside this parentheses here, we have 3 times negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And I kept that negative 3 in parentheses because it is a negative. Sometimes we like to do that. 8 plus negative 1 in parentheses gives me a, gives me a 7. Okay? All right. Now negative 3 squared... Negative 3 squared is just positive 9 because it's negative 3 times negative 3. And remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. Minus 7 equals 2. So your answer for that would be 2. All right, so before we start these two problems, did you know that a cockroach will live for 9 days without its head before it starves to death? All right, so we have, for our next problem, we have x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 2. All right, so we're going to plug those in for our variables. So we have 3. Remember, when letters are next to each other, it just means to multiply. So 3 times negative 1 times negative 2. And the negative 1 and negative 2, once again, came from right over here. Those will be different for every problem. They change all the time. Minus... 2 times negative 1 cubed. 
Okay, and I put that in parentheses so we remember that that's an exponent and it's negative 1 to the third power. Okay, so first thing we want to look for is exponents. So we have 3 times negative 1 times negative 2 minus 2 times negative 1 cubed is just negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which will be negative 1. Okay, now we want to look for our, our multiplication. So 3 times negative 1 gives me negative 3 times negative 2 gives me positive 6. So I have 6 minus, and then I can also take 2 times negative 1, which gives me negative 2. All right. Now, if we remember from a couple days ago, 6 minus a negative 2 is just the same as 6 plus 2, which gives me 8. So my answer for this is 8. Okay. And you might want to rewatch that problem if you didn't quite understand where everything came from. Okay, and then our last one here. We have 3ab squared minus ab to the second power. Notice how this one looks a little different with ab in parentheses all to the second power. Okay, well, no, notice how we take care of that once we get into this problem. a is 2, so we're going to take 3 times 2 times b squared, so 1 squared, minus... Uh, 2 times 1 to the second power. Okay, so in the first part here, we want to look for parentheses, so we have 2 times 1 in parentheses. So we're going to take care of that part first. 2 times 1 is just 2 squared. Now I got rid of the parentheses. Okay, notice that's where the parentheses came in place, so we took care of the parentheses there. The exponent on the 1 here only goes to the 1. Okay, this exponent here ended up going to both the 2 and the 1 because they multiplied together first. All right, now we do our exponent. So we have 3 times 2 times 1 squared is just 1 because it's 1 times 1 minus 2 squared, which is 4. Then we have multiplication. So 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 gives me 6 again minus 4 and 6 minus 4 is 2. All right, and there is your answer. Okay, and that is it for evaluating expressions. Remember, plug the numbers in and evaluate with order of operation. All right, and do not forget to take your quiz back on the website. We'll see you later.